Right, a few paper two questions, probability stats. No excuses to anyone when it comes to the exam. So 2018, paper two, question one. In a competition, Mary had a probability of one over 20 of winning, probability of one over 10 of finishing in second place, and a probability of a quarter and finishing third. She wins the competition, she gets 9,000, comes second, 7,000, comes third, she gets 3,000. In all other cases, she gets nothing. Each participant must pay 2,000 to enter, so steep enough. So she'll get, scribble in, you know, use your exam paper. She gets 9,000, but the probability that's 1 over 20. Probability of coming second is 1 over 10. When she comes second, she gets 7,000. And third there, 1 quarter. And she gets 3,000. Now, for expected value, I always do outcome times probability or probability times outcome, whatever you prefer. So what's the outcomes here? She can get 9,000. And what's the probability of that? Probability of getting that is one over 20. So always the outcome times the probability. If she can get 7,000, what's the probability of that? It's one over 10. Or she can get 3,000. And the probability of that is a quarter. So one in four people is going to get uh, 3,000, which is not bad. So 9,000 by 1 over 20 gives us 450. So I'm just working along now, and then we'll tally up all these answers. 7,000 by 1 over 10 is 700, and 3,000 by a quarter is 750. Throw that in your calculator, and you'll see. Add up all those parts. And you get 750 plus 1900. So that's the expected value of each person playing the game. So the person charging, or the person in, like say, a club that's running this, it's 2000 to enter. The club will make 100 euro on average per person. Find the expected value of Mary's loss. Mary is expected to lose 100 uh, euro each time she plays. So a club will obviously need to make money. So the expected value always links to the player. Part two. Each of the three prizes in the competition is increased by the same amount. But the entry fee is unchanged, so still going to be 2,000 euro. For example, if Mary wins the competition now, she gets 9,000 plus X. So that's our outcome. Mary now expects to break even. So that means we want at the end expected value to be 2,000 euro. So breaking even or fair uh, test is when the cost of entry is the same as what you expect to get out. Find the value of x and I'll just tear up the same way. Outcome times probability. So the outcome here 9,000. In this case actually plus x and your probability 1 over 20. Next outcome 7,000. So they're all increased at plus x. The chance of that is 1 over 10. And the last one is 3,000 plus x. Probability that's a quarter. So times those. If you want to be brackets. So, we, so you're going to have 450 and 1 over 20 x if you like. But that's the same as 0 0.05 x. You know. So if you like 1 over 20. I prefer the decimals in that case. 0 0.05 but whatever you like, just you don't have to worry about the same denominator then. Here, 700 plus 0.1x, just put a tenth into your calculator. I'm just multiplying 1 tenth times 7,000 and 1 tenth times x. 1 quarter times 3,000, which we worked up up there, and 1 quarter times x, so 0.25x. Now the key thing here is, she's going to break even. So all these things here are going to tally up to 2,000. So 450 plus 0 0.05x plus 700 plus 0.1x plus 750 plus 0.25x. I'll just put it over there. It's equal to 2000. Tidy her up now a wee bit. She's looking at that messy. 450, 700, 750. We've seen up there is 1900 plus 1.5. 5.4x. Now it's just a simple equation. When you get that far, you're flying, you're rubbing the hands. 
take them away. 100 is equal to 0 0.4x. So work out x, 100 over 0 0.4. I'm going to divide it by 0 0.4 is 250. 250, so find the value of x, 250. Well, keep our lit. These are all probability stats questions. So number two, uh, the diagram shows a standard normal curve. So open up page 37 or whatever in your formula book. The same as a time now, I don't have them with me. Um, so the standard normal curve, your Z scores, there's your mean in the middle. The shaded area represents 67% of the data. I wish I did have it now. So there's 67% in there, or 0 0.67. Now what you've got to do is go to the page in your Z scores and look up what value of a Z corresponds to the probability to be 0 0.67. And when you do that, I have ones out in front of me here in the computer. I can see that a Z value of 0 0.67 gives me, or a Z value of 0 0.44. 0 0.44. So if you look up a Z value of 0 0.44, you'll see that uh, it gives you a value of 0 0.67. And the only thing different it was down this end of it, and they said there's 67 percent are heavier than Johnny or smarter than Johnny you just put in minus 0 0.44 right so the percentage results in maths had a mean mark of 70 so the population in that case the population mean 70 standard deviation label all your numbers percentage in English so the same class had a mean mark of 72 so you standard deviation is 10 the results and both were normally distributed, so that shape there. Mary got 65, so that's what she got. That's her x, it's her sample, while uh, to her variable, while she got 68 in English. And which exam did Mary do relatively better than the other students? So, what they want you to do there is the z scores. So, get the z scores of each. So, there's a standardizing formula x minus mu over standard deviation. So if we work it out for maths, x, our value, 65 minus 70 over the standard deviation, 15 minus 5 over 15 minus 0 0.33. If you see the wee dot above your calculator, press the SD button once more. For English, x 68 minus the population mean 72 over the standard deviation which is 10 minus 4 over 10 is minus 0 0.4 so this means both the results are below the class average math says there english slightly further down it's 0.4 standard deviations away from the mean it's 0.33 so she did better at maths as she's not, a far, not as far away from the mean. Or you could say in English she was further away from the mean. Not as many standard deviations. I'll keep her lit. In English, the top 15% of students were awarded an A grade. So this is the one now, get them tight. I know we're going quick, but just to race through them. Top 15% of students, so there's 15% in there. There's 0 0.15, you change it as a decimal. So that means below. Z scores always go, if you look at the picture on the right of that formula book, they go from here back. So there's 85% in there, there's 0 0.85. So we want to find what Z score gives me 0 0.85. Uh, this is English, and in English, remember what we labelled in that first part, her U in English, so the population mean for English was 72, standard deviation was 10, find the least whole number mark, you think, what we label mark in that last one was the X, you're finding the X, in order to find the X using that standardising formula, 
they must need your Z score. So going over that top 15% or up here, Z scores always go from the right back. So there's 85% in there. You look in your tables and see what value of Z gives you 0 0.85. And if you look that up, you get a Z score of 1.04. So maybe have a look at 1.04 and you'll see 0 0.85 there, thereabouts. We're looking for our X, we know the population mean and our standard deviation is 10. Then just tidy that up. 1.04 times 10 is equal to X minus 72. Fraction can disappear because there's an equals and your 72 comes across. 10.4 plus 72. I just multiplied those over the brackets and that gives you 82.4. And find the least whole number mark. So you need at least 82.4. So you need at least 83. Um, in order to get that in the top 15%. And using the empirical rule or otherwise. So the empirical rule is that plus or minus one standard deviation is 67%. Uh, I like the R otherwise. Estimate the percentage of students who score between 52 and 82. So percentage of students who got between 52 and 82, all you do there, work out the Z value of each of these. So X minus mu over standard deviation. And this is still English. So 52 minus your U, which is 72 over 10. So get your Z score. Minus 20 over 10 is minus two. Do the same over here. 82 minus 72 over 10, 10 over 10, which is one. So instead of writing that, because we don't have a normal distribution for English scores in that school, but we can work out probabilities of Z scores in a standard normal curve. And what you've got to do is take them individually. So draw a wee picture to yourself. See what you're trying to do. You're going between minus two and one, and you're working out the area of all this curve. Remember what I said, Z scores go from the right back. It shows you it in the picture. So the first area you work out is that one there. And if you, if you like, it's the probability of Z is less than or equal to one. I wouldn't worry about that. Look up in your formula book and you see there you get 0 0.8413. Then you're going to work out the area of this bit. Is it bigger than a half or less than a half, that there? So obviously less than a half. So if you look up two, you get 0.9772. There's no way that's 97.72% shaded. So it's one minus that. One minus 0 0.9772. And you get 0 0.0228. And then what do you do with these two figures? You subtract them. So that's the area, the first one there, goes from there back. This one goes from here back. So if you take away this, this you'll get that black region then in between therefore your answer is 0 0.8413 minus 0 0.0228 take them two away you get 0 0.8185 um, and technically they say the percentage multiply it by 100 81.85 percent and i might just do one more um, Keep it going. That's the first three questions done then in that paper. So, security code consists of six digits chosen random from zero to nine. And don't fall into the trap. If you look at the digits zero to nine, zero, one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten digits. A lot of people just say nine getting the zero. Uh, the code may begin with a zero and digits may be repeated. For example, there's an example of a code. How many possible codes will end in zero? So I have a six digit code. So the way I look at that, I've got six boxes. The only condition here is it ends with a zero. So how many options can go at the end of that is one. That's my zero. There's only one choice. doesn't matter what the rest of them are. The only thing they said end of the zero and they can be repeated so 10 by 10 by 10 by 10 by 10 throw that in your calculator or 10 to the power of 5 
Let me work that out. Yes, 100,000 codes. Next, how many are the possible codes will contain the digits 2018 together? Now, if you think of that, 2018, the thing there is there's four digits together. So, if there's four digits together, 2018. Say there at the start, how many other spaces are left to be filled? There's two. So it'll be 2018 by 10 by 10. That's not the only thing. That 2018, it's up here, can shuffle into the right. Or you could have a number at the start. You can have your 2018. And you can have a number at the end, couldn't you? Or that 2018 can go right to the end. So you have a number, a number, and your 2018. So how many choices of numbers go into these? It's 10, 10, 10 by 10. Why well, that there is set in stone. So it's only kind of one choice, one selection, one combination. And remember, how do you say or in maths? You add them up. How do you say and? It's multiply. So you tally that up, you get 100. Don't be multiplying by 2018 or anything. That's just the numbers going together. It's one selection. Plus 100, plus 100. There's 300 possible codes. And the last one here. Find A, B, C, and D. Here we're working back to the factorial. Remember, factorial 3 factorial means 3 by 2 by 1. 5 factorial. 5 by 4 by 3 by 2 by 1. n plus 3 factorial will be mean n plus 3 times n plus 2 times n plus 1, you know, and so on. So n plus 3 factorial means n plus 3 times n plus 2. And I can see a common link as n plus 1 factorial, n plus 1 factorial. Times, say for me n plus 2, I'll show you that in blue there, is n plus 2 times n plus 1 factorial. It means takes it all the way back because I can write, say, there for 5 factorial, I can say that's 5 by 4 factorial or 5 by 4 by 3 factorial because 3 by 2 by 1, the same thing all over n plus 1 factorial, n plus 1. Factorial. Now you can see what we got above and below the line. They can go. And all I'm left with is n plus 3 times n plus 2 times n plus 2. Multiply them out. Take your time. And we get, say, I'll do these two first of all. n squared plus 2n plus 2n is plus 4n plus 4. And then multiply that out. n cubed plus 4n squared plus 4n. 3n squared plus 12n plus 12. Tidy her up. 7n squared plus 16n plus 12. And technically they said find a, b, c and d. You can see they said a n cubed plus b n squared plus c n plus d. a is just a number in front of n cubed which is 1. b is a number in front of n squared which is 7. c is a number in front of n 16. And D is the number at the end, which is 12. Now, that's your probability stats short questions.